A dozen years ago, the idea of having a cancer genome atlas was kind of controversial. Not everybody believed that we would learn that much about cancer by looking at DNA because we knew there would be a lot of misspellings of DNA that were not necessarily relevant in figuring out which ones were was going to be a big challenge. To do this well was going to require an enormous amount of investment. It was sort of a dream. Can we figure out how to do this? Can we do this? And we found out that we can. There's real value to go beyond what we are comfortable with. Uh, go outside the box. Don't just look under the lamppost, search through the genome. One cancer sequence might tell you something, thousands would tell you a lot more. TCGA was set up to take that idea and scale it up. And that's what has happened in a pretty amazing way. The goal of TCGA was to characterize the molecular changes that happen within cancer cells. TCGA was the first one to comprehensively map these molecular alterations in a large set of human samples for many different kinds of cancers. Now 11,000 cancers, 33 different cancer types, all in the public domain for everybody to learn everything you can about what causes this disease and what we could do about it. When we started, the idea was that we were going to find four, five, six uh, genes that will have alterations in the 40, 50, 60 percent range. What happened was we were finding a lot of genes mutated at a very low level, but then looking at them in concert with their function, it, we rapidly understood that the, the important part was not the genes themselves, but the pathways that being out. Genes code for proteins. Proteins don't work alone, they work together in, in complicated uh, machines called pathways or protein complexes. So one of the things we've been able to do with TCGA is to bring those data together across hundreds of patients across all cancer types and really get a better sense of what those pathways are. The large sample size and the genomic throughput also allowed us to discover far more cancer genes than what was um, appreciated before. The genes that are frequently mutated in cancer are often not unique to one cancer type, but rather across cancer types. Uh, that's behind the idea of a basket trial in which patients are not enrolled based on their histological cancer type, but rather what mutations that their tumors have. They're using not just mutations, but using the, the gene expression data, using the methylation data. We've been able to ve develop uh, better subclassifications of individual cancers and see that in many cases they might respond differently to, to, to treatments. The classification that was put together by TCGA clearly indicated that there was a subgroup of, of low-grade gliomas that had a highly malignant potential and they were treated as the regular low-grade gliomas. Today, the patients are being treated and follow up differently because they get classified in the correct group. That is a big success. There's not just being able to classify patients into groups, but we're getting much greater insights into the molecular mechanisms for those different classifications. Those mechanistic insights can, you know, further down the line lead us to uh, perhaps better treatments for those individual patients. Some of these discoveries have led to um, new therapeutic targets and even new drugs and biomarkers. New drugs that respond to or or interact with or in other ways influenced by the genetic variation and molecular characterization. TCGA set the stage for all of that. Without it, I'm not sure where we'd be in precision medicine for cancer today. This was a team effort uh, of the most wonderful sort. Nobody worried too much amongst the scientific teams about who was going to get the credit. So much of it uh, involved teams at every level teams in the genome characterization centers, teams in the genome sequencing centers, teams in the analytics. So team science reached a whole new level with TCGA. It serves as a proof of concept that this kind of team science setup could be hugely successful and impactful for cancer research. And it has steered people's mindset towards more open and sharing uh, research philosophy. The group came together with strong leadership and learned literally learned how to be collaborative in a effective way because we had an objective and we have timeline 
uh, to deliver the data that the public is waiting for. It's worth doing resource type projects. When I mean resource type projects, are projects that have not a very narrow hypothesis, but they go to create a resource of data that can be mined for hypotheses. And that's an important output of TCGA, uh, as a serving as mission of providing a resource that will support basic research and drug development. And this rich repertoire of data could be mined in many different ways to address different questions that uh, each investigator is interested in, and he or she can then study it in more depth. And um, now, after a talk, I often hear people ask a speaker, what does the TCGA data show for this particular gene that you're interested in and for this cancer type that you are studying? It is only logical that all the data created should be given to the community at large. And when I say the community, it's not just the scientific community, but the patient community, patient advocates, anybody can, that can interpret the data. TCGA has followed that model. In fact, TCGA has pioneered that model. We were releasing the data to the public way before the papers were being sent for review. This model have supported the interrelated and subsequent effort in epigenomics, in proteomics, or those are very important next step to enhance and enrich our understanding of the genome. It's just the different creative ways that people are now using the data. It's publicly available. Anyone with the interest and, and expertise can go start looking at these data sets and, um, and, and try to discover new things. I try to remind people when the project started, the cost of doing a whole genome sequence was hundreds of thousands to millions of dollars. It now costs about a thousand dollars is one of the reasons that this has become possible. And frankly, projects like TCGA, because they drove the technology to become cheaper and they drove the analysis to become more tractable, are one of the reasons why genomics is now being applied to lots of other diseases too. What TCGA did, because of the scale of the project, was to really push all the technology developers out there to really up their game. How do we best do variant calling? What are the different standards you should use when doing RNA sequencing in cancer, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and all of that's gonna have an impact in the field and sort of pushing everybody forward to a certain set of standards that's gonna have a huge impact. We have that foundation now of understanding, which we did not have 10 years ago and which will stand for many years to come. We're as an entire field, the entire field of cancer genomics, the entire field of genomics is in a different place now than it was before the program. With that team working with patients and patient advocates to see how all of that information can be translated to patients, it's magic. The data is just a little part of the legacy. The legacy is a change in the mindset and the opening of the door for other projects of this kind. I have to give a shout out uh, to the incredible dedication uh, of the scientists who made this possible and to the patients from whose cancers these tissues were derived. Everybody believed in the vision that this could transform our understanding of cancer. They agreed that data had to be generated with the highest possible quality so that other researchers could count on it being right and they agreed to give the data away so that everybody else could start working with it right away. That's a noble enterprise, and so much credit to the thousands who worked to make this possible. U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, National Institutes of Health, National Cancer Institute, Cancer.gov, 1-800-4-CANCER. Produced January 2018.